Welcome back to video number two. This is our palette cleanser about the royal family. They've been busy. Let's jump in. Let's start with Prince William. He expressed condolences at the passing of Alfred Gardner. He's one of the last surviving passengers from the Windrush. William met him last summer and heard his story and said some very nice words about the legacy he's leaving behind. The man also had an unwavering love of cricket. And it's because of that that he founded Britain's first ever Caribbean cricket club. He made his home in Leeds. He came to the UK in 1948 and he passed away at the age of 98. All right, moving on. Here we go, still sticking with Prince William. He went to speak to Olympic and Paralympic swimmers at the community pool in an area northeast of England. And he was highlighting the Royal Foundation's new work to boost access to swimming. The pool was apparently closed due to budget cuts, but reopened last month because 400,000 pounds from crowdfunding was raised. Prince William and Princess Catherine also gave a donation to reopen the pool. So William started with a, with a meeting with Adam Peaty and Tom Dean and some para-Olympians as well and showcased their medals. Now, in case you don't recognize this guy above, that's Adam Ramsay, who recently became engaged to the daughter of Gordon Ramsay, the chef. Anyway, while they were talking, it came out that the reason that Prince William didn't go to the Olympics in Paris was because Catherine was doing her chemo and he was very concerned that he could get sick and he didn't want to risk bringing COVID home. So, you know, there you go. So that he said they watched everything, but he wasn't able to attend in person. Now, they continued on, they discussed the impact of the community pools that were closing down, and, you know, William said he heard all about it. Interestingly enough, he said, we know that he and Catherine are both scuba certified. He said that um, Prince George loves scuba diving as well. He said, uh, William said that they took George when he was 10 years old, and he said he freaked out a little bit, but he loved it, and it introduced him to the world of water. So I guess the kids are, you know, following in the footsteps of William and Catherine which I don't blame them at all. Now, as well as helping to fund this pool, the Royal Foundation announced that they are forming a partnership with Tom's company called Swim School, and they're going to provide a thousand learn to swim packages to children across the UK next year. We know that this guy, uh, Tom, is a three-time Olympian swimming champion. So he said, you know, I was talking to William, we're gonna be working together, we're gonna make sure that there's swimming lessons, and these are fabulous projects. I just love that. They're saying that William's visit is a testament to what community can get done when they, you know, work together and that swimming is going to be a big focus of the foundation of the Royal Foundation going forward. I just love that. They're also talking about how smart William looked. Oh, well, he always looks smart. Moving on. All right, a few days ago, it was National Poetry Day. And so the royal family marked it by pointing out a poem in haiku. Also, King Charles sent a message of condolence to the president of Nepal because they've had recent flooding and landslides. Next up, on October 3rd, Queen Camilla went to Westminster Abbey because she was visiting a building that was designed in tribute to King Charles. That's pretty cool. The building is called Sacristy. It's on the grounds of Westminster Abbey, and it's going to be named the King Charles III Sacristy when it's finished. Now, earlier this year, for those of you who don't know, Camilla became patron of the Westminster Abbey Sacristy Project. So even though it's not done, Camilla went, she was shown around the site, it's still under construction. She was taken along the scaffolding and they explained the project to her. And she also sat down with the architect of the building. This is a state-of-the-art L-shaped building that will adjoin the northern side of the abbey uh, and you'll be able to see it. Now, they did say, believe it or not, that they did find skeletons in a 13th century burial site. So that's not fake what you're looking at. They actually found the finding people. So it's a 13 million pound project. And she said she was shocked at the amount of bones and bodies that were exposed during the work. Apparently, there were several layers of burial at the site, which I think back in old days, I think that's just what they did. There was a very well-preserved chalk-lined grave that they are saying belonged to an 11th century monk. 
I must say, I loved Westminster Abbey when I was there. It was just amazing. Now, the new building has been designed to look like, you know, it belongs there, like it's always been there. A big thank you to Remulade Sauce for showing us what the queen was wearing when she was there. Let's move on. Next up, we have Edward, the Duke of Edinburgh. He met people in Crawfordsburn in a celebration of youth awards from north and south of the border. Remember, he's on a two-day trip to mark the 25th anniversary of the collaboration between the award and the President's Award, which is Ireland's equivalent. Looking good, Edward. All right, let's move on to his lovely wife, Sophie. For those of you who don't know, Sophie, it's just announced, is taking on the, she's going to be the patron of Girl Guiding. For those of you who don't know, this is the largest youth organization in the UK dedicated completely to girls. I could be wrong, but for me, this is kind of like the Girl Scouts or the Brownies here in the United States. Now, Amy on Twitter congratulated Sophie and pointed out the fact in 1959, Princess Anne, who was nine years old, joined the very first Buckingham Palace company as a brownie. That's like the United States. Now, this originally was formed apparently in 1937 for Princess Elizabeth. I, you know what? I think that's just great that the royals went out of their way, even back then, to make sure that their children had the same experiences as everybody else. Yeah, love it. Moving on. And we're going to finish up with this story. Another statue. We've had several statues that have gone up, but another statue that cost 200,000 pounds has been unveiled. The problem is, and it, it is a life-size bronze sculpture, and it's in a small town, but they're saying that it doesn't look anything like her. Apparently, uh, it's a difference of opinion. The work was originally commissioned for the Platinum Jubilee in 2022, but it wasn't unveiled until September 27th. And um, some people are saying it's a fitting tribute, and others are saying mm, it doesn't look anything like her. I think it looks like her. I, you know, I mean, guys, it's a sculpture. What You can't get that good. All right, you guys, you know what to do. Hit the like and the subscribe button and the bell for all notifications, even though you won't get any. Go ahead down into the description box where you'll find the link to my Twitter, my Getter, my Rumble, my email, my Patreon, which is currently paused, my Amazon wish list, and my physical address. And for those of you who've donated to my coffee fund to help me buy gasoline for my generator, thank you so much. And as always, you guys, have a great day.